Hey, back house, I've been meaning to ask you, how'd that plant-based diet go for you? Mm. Mm. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Good. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Mm. 30 days just flew by. So if it, if it really went well, then why all the sweets? I don't understand. Well, I'm starting my raw food one, but uh, I've got until noon, so I'm just trying to get some chocolate before I start my diet. Oh, right. Mm. Right. Oh, so you're getting all of it. Mm. Oh. Mm. I figure yeah. I should have one chocolate treat a day, so times that by the number of days, and you get this. Yeah. Okay. Pretty mm. good thinking. Mm. Yeah. It would be like slow release, you know, so I won't get cravings. Now, if you excuse me, I've got a deadline to meet. Oh, 10 minutes left. I'm getting a stomachache just watching you eat. I'll come back in 10 minutes when you're done. Welcome back to G Living. I'm here on the couch with author of Skinny Bitch, Rory Friedman. Hey, Rory. Hi, Sarah. Nice to meet you. So nice to meet you, too. Yeah, and you are a skinny bitch. Ditto. <laughs> now you're on the top of the New York Times bestseller list. Are you also a rich bitch? Not yet, but hopefully <laughs> soon. We only get paid twice a year, but oh, hopefully you do? the next couple of checks. Because if you're be skinny ones. and a rich bitch, that's really not fair at all. I know, I know. So. Believe me, I don't take it for granted at all. None right, of it. Right. And then obviously the Victoria Beckham moment, that really changed things for you guys. It really did. You know, we were fortunate the book was doing well on its own, but really we had no mainstream publicity. So the whole time the book was on the shelf, for the first year and a half, I think it was, it was selling well, our publisher was happy, we were on the LA Times bestseller list, and life was good. But then Victoria Beckham was photographed holding a copy of the book, and we got all this mainstream publicity, which we'd been lacking before, and now we're on the New York Times bestseller list and couldn't be any happier. Right, well, I'm glad she actually came in handy for something. Okay, so now it's confession time. Rory, on the whole, I follow Skinny Bitch principles, but there are a couple of exceptions. Can I just All right, run let's past hear you? Let's right. hear Morning, I do like to have one strong killer cup of coffee, like organic coffee with almond milk and agave nectar. Okay. But I like having that. Is that so bad? It's not the end of the world. It's good that you're using the agave and it's, it's good that you're using the almond milk. Great that it's organic. Wonderful. You know, when you're using non-organic coffee, you're getting pesticides and all sorts of stuff that you wouldn't want to start your morning with. However, that being said, caffeine affects every organ system in the body from the skin to the nervous system. So you're basically starting your day every morning putting yourself into a fight or flight mode. Not what you want to be doing to your body. If you can get rid of the caffeine and wean, your, wean yourself off a little at a time, then you should be able to start your day without anything. Okay, and then my second one, this is like totally white trash. I chew sugar-free gum. like. Okay. Quite a few pieces a day. Okay. You know, I get it, and there are times when you need gum, you're, you're in a fix, you've got to have it, and sometimes I do it too. However, it's not something we want to do regularly. Brush your teeth, chew a little mint leaf, use some uh, fresh peppermint oil, but sugar-free gums are sweetened with aspartame or other artificial sweeteners that are basically like opening a little can of poison and pouring it down your mouth. Not good for you. Just for fresh breath, there's other stuff you can do. My thing is, I don't know if it's just me, but do you carry like a bag of whole food with you everywhere you go? Like I find like I'm constantly eating. I'm literally working here. I have lunch and then two hours later I'm starving. I'm just eating so much stuff. Right, like... well that's one of the benefits of eating the skinny bitch lifestyle is that you get to eat all day long because you're eating foods that are really good for you and that pass through your body easily and quickly. You're constantly hungry and there's nothing wrong with that. Keep eating as long as you're eating good whole foods, why not? Drag your bag along everywhere you go. <laughs> I do. And how about you? Were you physically any different before you started this? You know, I have to say that it's something we get asked all the time. Did you used to have a weight problem? No, I've definitely always been thin, but I've never felt better. And I'm 32 now, and I feel stronger and healthier and more fit than I did when I was a teenager. And it's absolutely because of this lifestyle. It's the best thing I've ever done for myself. And I expected to maybe look a little bit better when I started eating this way, but I didn't expect to feel happier and more positive. And those are things that really have just have really changed a big big time. Now how about for the average person? They eat meat, they eat dairy. What's one thing that they can do to start making a, a positive change in their diet? Right, well it's definitely a big overhaul for a lot of people to go from the way they're eating now to the skinny bitch lifestyle. So if you're ready to make that change and you want to do it right in one fell swoop, go ahead. But for most people it works to just sort of ease your way in and pick one thing at a time to tackle. So for example, let's say you do start your day and you drink coffee every morning. 
keep everything else the same, but just try and get your coffee addiction under control. Take a couple weeks, tackle that. Once you feel like you've got that under control, maybe start tackling your soda addiction. And then again, a couple weeks, you feel good about that. Then maybe start weaning yourself off the meat and the dairy and the artificial sweeteners and just go a little bit at a time. Yeah, it's crazy, isn't it? Like how far removed people are from eating whole foods. But I mean, there's all these things like trans fats, high fructose corn syrup. That is basically just like a toxin. And it's so insidious, isn't it? It's in like dressings and all these things that you would never imagine. People really should get back to the basics. Right, and it's, it's a hard thing for most of us to do when we're not used to eating this way. And when we also, it is insidious. You expect, well, well, I bought this cereal and it says on the front that it's all natural or that it's a health cereal. But if you look in the back and you read the ingredients, you'll see that the first ingredient is sugar or the second ingredient is high fructose corn syrup. So one of the things that we say over and over again in Skinny Bitch is use your head and read the ingredients. Don't just assume that because the packaging is calling it one thing that it's that. You have to read the ingredients and you should know what you're eating every time you sit down and eat. Now, here's a dietary dilemma. I'm often in a situation where I've been invited to someone's house for dinner and they say, hey, do you have any dietary requirements? And I'm always dreading that because I'm like, well, if I'm being honest, I really don't want to eat meat, fish, dairy. I mean, all the list goes on. What's a nice way to approach that situation without being a total nightmare? Well, I think the best thing to do is not expect anybody to really have to meet your dietary requirements. I'm going to bring something I love to share and, and, and show other people what it is that I do eat. And I'm going to bring a dessert that everyone's going to love. And then make sure you bring something that's really good because <laughs> Everybody's going to be looking and scrutinizing and you want to make sure it does come, come off well. And then one last one, I was recently on the road shooting and uh, it was in the middle of America and you know the menu was like, yike, there's nothing here that I can eat. Mm -hmm. So I ordered a salad, asked for the dressing on the side, but it was like drenched in this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. I mean, what do you do? Sometimes you just can't eat what you want to. What do you do then? Well, you know, it is a challenge, especially when you're traveling. And, and the thing is, we're not perfectionists. We're not obsessive about what we eat. This is how we eat. This is the lifestyle we live, and we do the best we can. Obviously, the book is called Skinny Bitch. Do you lose weight by following your diet? We know that our intention was to, to teach people how to eat right, to take back Take back your health and take back your brain because we've been hijacked by the food industry and also by the governmental agencies that are supposed to be protecting us. So really we want to give people the information to, to take care of their bodies and make healthier choices and there's no right weight to be, there's no right size to wear. Skinny Bitch is a provocative title to get people to pay attention and read the book, but our intention's clear. If you read the book cover to cover, we want people to eat well and take yeah. good care of themselves. And the message really is kind of to eat whole foods that are healthy and good for your body. You know, you are what you eat, right? You are what you eat. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for stopping by, Rory. Thanks, Sarah. Good it's luck. Great to meet yeah. You. Oh. Uh. Man, that was a bad idea. Yeah, it's like something I would have thought of. You alright? I think so. No, I'm not. Ugh. And that right there is why I stick to the car section. Uh, you gotta bury that back house, reduce your carbon load. Uh, Throw it right in the garden. <laughs>